Hi, uh, I'm standing out here in front of Our Lady of the Angels Church in Chicago, Illinois, uh, Humble Park neighborhood. Uh, in 1958, on December 1, there was a uh, terrible fire um, that, that claimed the lives of 92 children and three nuns. Um, behind me you see here the, uh, the rebuilt school after the tragedy occurred. Um, here's the original church. To sleep with the angels on a cold afternoon December 1st of 1958, a fire broke out at Our Lady of the Angels School, grade school in Humble Park, neighborhood of Chicago, as mentioned. This fire would not only forever change the lives of everyone affected by the fire, but also the nation. And how the fire and life safety systems, especially in schools, are constructed and maintained based on such a tragedy. This is one of the most difficult books I have ever read. The story compiled from eyewitnesses, eyewitness accounts, family members of victims, and emergency responders brought a feeling of what if in each story. It's important to know that the City of Chicago Fire Department inspected and approved the school for occupancy just weeks prior to the fire. It's also important to note that the regulations in the 1950s were nowhere near what they are today, especially for schools like Our Lady of the Angels, who were grandfathered in. This fire started at the base of the building in the basement. The fire worked its way up through the, through the stairwell and bypassed the first floor due to a properly installed emergency um, exit door that blocked the stairwell from the fire, or from the, from the hallway. The second floor had no door, so when the fire made it up to the second floor, it, pu it poured into the hallway. The fire moved its way through and blocking, uh, blocking any way out for children, for teachers, for anyone who was in those classes. There was one story of a teacher who heard the fire, uh, was there, heard, smelled something, and she went and checked in. It was hot to the touch, so she couldn't take the kids out that door. She ran to her back door where there was uh, a locked door, which was the procedure at the time to be secure. She reached in her pocket to pull out the keys, and then a sense of panic struck her as she realized she had left the keys at home. She told the kids to start praying. As smoke began to fill the room and the children began screaming in terror, the door was kicked open from the back. The pastor in the, of the parish came in through the back door and the children escaped. Unfortunately, this was not the case for all teachers and students within the facility. There were several key problems during the emergency response. The fire department didn't receive a call until after the fire had filled the second floor hallway. Some estimate the fire was burning for as long as 35 minutes before the fire department was called. The fire alarm wasn't pulled despite the teachers knowing there was an emergency because the guidelines were for the principal to pull the fire alarm and only the principal could do this. Next, the fire department was given the wrong address. They originally pulled up a block away from Our Lady of the Angels School at Our Lady of the Angels Church. Um, next, the door, the doors and gates were locked, which delayed response and hindered evacuations. And lastly, there was no phone accessible to the school, led, which led to further delays in notifying the fire department. Life after the fire. After the fire, many people fought depression, sadness, and unbearable anxiety. There was no counseling offered to the victims or their families. Many people uh, were delusional saying that God must have wanted them sooner or God chose them and not us. Uh, this led individuals to think that uh, they, they who survived were the unlucky ones, that God did not want them. Likewise, others questioned, why me? Why am I still here? And why is my family gone? Why is my brother or sister gone? Or why is my son or daughter gone? The survivor guilt uh, came into play after that. Uh, the lack of attention to those suffering from mental health problems was a huge mistake during the recovery process. The physical recovery was overly taxing too. The children who had, had significant burns spent months upon months in the hospital receiving skin graft after skin graft and the pain was unbearable. Many parents had to 
step out of the room while their child was screaming in agony while they were having their bandages changed. Today, the cause of the fire is still labeled as undetermined. However, many people have placed blame on the janitor who allowed newspapers and clothing to be placed there. Children who in the past have been caught smoking in the air. And lastly, and probably the most likely scenario, is arson. There was even one case where one boy was caught setting a fire to a building in Cicero, a nearby western suburb of Chicago. His family hired a polygraph detector examiner to determine whether or not he was being honest uh, when these questions were asked. Uh, the examiner found out much more than he anticipated. Not only did he start the fire in Cicero, but he started several throughout the Chicagoland area. In fact, the boy was actually attending school at Our Lady of the Angels the day of the fire. As the examiner continued to ask questions, he found that the boy did indeed admit to setting the fire at the school that day. Later on, the boy, the boy changed his story and uh, to this day still denies the, setting the fire. It's important to note that he also did serve time for setting fires as an adult. Um, very interesting fact is at the time, um, the juvenile laws at the time did not uh, allow anybody under the age of 13 to be charged with a crime. Conclusion. There are many lessons learned from this fire. The hurt and pain of the disaster lives on despite the school being rebuilt and the surrounding community changing. The fire brought significant pain, but also brought significant change to the fire and life safety for schools.